everyone, my name is Anna and welcome to Cactus Caffeine. In this channel, I share with you my passion for growing cactus and other desert plants over a cup of coffee. For today, we will be talking about my succulent plants that are not cactus. <laughs> so today will be a different kind of video. If you are a regular viewer of this channel, you know that about 90% of my collection are cactus. But I do have a few plants that are not cactus and they are able to survive and thrive in the harsh desert environment where I am located at. So I live in Las Vegas, Nevada. I know I always make videos or I make a lot of videos about cactus, but I don't always talk about my other desert plants. So in this video, they will be on the spotlight. I am going to tell you very early on in this video that I don't have any succulents, those that are leafy or fleshy type, you know, like the Echeverias, the uh, Chrysulas or Craptopetalum and those types of succulents. I don't have them, so I won't, you won't see that in this video. I did try taking care of those types many times over the years, but I find that it is very hard to keep them alive in uh, our summer here so i stopped taking care of those types of plants so what you will see here are succulents that can thrive in an arid condition when i use the term succulents um, i'm using it in the general or broad definition of the word succulents being having a, a thick part of the plant that usually stores water so it can be the leaves or the stems or sometimes even the roots i know botanists would argue or they don't actually agree on what the actual definition of succulent is but for the purpose of this video i am using it to refer to plants that can survive arid conditions or the desert type of plants that can withstand prolonged periods of dryness without having to need to water them. I would like to start off with my aloe. So next to cactus, this is the next uh, type of succulents that I have the most or a lot of. I think next to cactus, this would be my second uh, favorite succulent. If I'm not a cactus collector, I would say I will collect aloes so i love them i love the variety that they come in i try not to get a lot of those that grow big so that is the only thing that is stopping me from collecting so much aloes is because they occupy so much space a lot of space because the rosettes would grow very wide and some of them would grow tall there are even tree aloes so some of them would grow really tall and big so they take up so much space so in collecting aloes, the only type that I collect or I try to collect are those that are compact. So they stay small. And um, these are a few of those that are in my collection. This is aloe Christmas carol. This is aloe uh, firecracker. I love how this would change color over the season. Winter time is the best time to look at this aloe for me because it will change all pink and purple during winter time as of now you can see some of them are still shrivel shriveled up um, due to the summer heat but now in fall they are starting to perk up once again this is an aloe swordfish i like how the color of the leaves are on this one it's bluish and the edges are salmon this one is an aloe blizzard and then this is um aloe christmas sleigh so these are my two christmasy aloes <laughs> this is the christmas carol and this is christmas sleigh so there it is side by side so you can see how they differ from each other very pretty i think these are my two most favorite aloes the sleigh and the carol if you want to see my entire aloe collection, or at least how they looked like last year, I made a video about that. I will put a link up on your screen and in the description below this video. Another type of plant that is closely related to aloes but are now in a separate genus are goni aloe. So this is a goni aloe variegata. I used to think this was an aloe but um, 
Thankfully, one of the viewers uh, corrected me and said this is now classified under Goni Aloe. Okay, so this one is a little bit more tender than the aloe, so I tried to keep this protected from too much sun. And also during winter time, I have to protect this from freeze. These are Adromiscus succulent plants. These are also drought tolerant, and um, I've had this one for several years now. This is the Adromiscus cristatus or the crinkle leaf plant. So this one survived for me for about three years now. It started as just one stem and now it produced this other stem. So now I have two of it. Um, as long as I protect this from extreme sun exposure during the summer, I keep it in a shaded position it can tolerate our heat here in the desert this is a recent purchase this is an adromiscus maculatus or the calico hearts so i featured this in my recent collective fall plant haul video and i just love the uh, brown or purple markings on its leaves and i like how chubby each leaf is <laughs> Another easy to care for desert plants are agave. This is agave Shidigera Black Widow, or at least that was the label in the pot where, when I bought this one. And then this is my tiniest agave. <laughs> this is an agave is themensis. I will flash the full name of this one on the screen. This one is uh, variegated and it grows very, very slow compared to the other types of agave. This one I find a little bit more challenging to take care of. But the other agaves that I have, I have uh, more in planted in the ground in my desert garden. Those I find them very hardy. They can tolerate extreme heat and they can also tolerate freezing temperatures for a short period of time. Here in my desert garden, I have one agave down here. This is the Queen Agave Victoria Regine. This is the compact type. If I have the Queen, I also have the King, of course. This is King Ferdinand Agave. The next set of plants that I would like to show you is my uh, Sanseveria collection, my little Sanseveria collection. <laughs> I used to have a lot more of these, but I've gotten rid of uh, some of them. I gave them away as uh, gifts. So these are what I have left. These are very hardy. I find this the easiest succulents to take care of. If you're new in succulents and you would like to try a hand on um, taking care of succulents, I would suggest you to buy Sanseverias. You would even see in the internet, they say these are hard to kill, <laughs> but of course it is possible to kill them too, but they are very hardy. This one, I don't know what the name of this is. This was just given to me by my aunt and I keep this one indoors. So for the whole year, this is growing indoors. It does get a little bit of sunlight through the window early in the morning, but not too much. It seemed to like it that way better because when I used to have this outdoors, the leaves were drying up. Even though it was in shade, the mere hot uh, temperature and dry air, it was drying up the ends of the leaves. So since then, I kept it indoors. This is already half of what it used to be. I just recently uh, divided this and gave some away. So this is what I kept, but it used to be more lush and was in a bigger pot. This one is a Sanseveria cylindrica. So this was given to me by Daz of Cacti Mania a few years ago. He gave me this straight sticks, but since then it was able to produce uh, pops. So now I have two more here. So it grows like a fan. This one I was able to keep it outdoors in shade and it uh, was able to survive our temperature these are Sanseveria Samurai. So this one is from Daz of Cacti Mania. And this is the one that I've had um, before he gave me this one. So this is my little Sanseveria collection. In this rack right here, I have all my Asclepiads. So these are also succulents. They are able to store water in their stems. So their stems are thicker. And that's how they are able to store water. Asclepiads are known for their flowers. So first of all, in here, I have several types. This one's at the back. These are 
stapelias, and then I have orbeas in here, and also huernia. This is a huernia. Now, they are distinct because of their flowers. They have such a unique type of flower. Their colors are usually uh, bold or exotic looking, as you may say, and they have five point flowers. Uh, here, I have an example right here. This is a huernia, a hybrid. So they have five points or one, two, three, four, five. So they are symmetrical usually with five points. And this is another one. Oh, the flower is now closed. This one was open um, about more than a week already, but I will show you a picture of it on the screen. So as you can see, one, two, three, four. It also have five points. They are also known for their flowers because they have very distinct smell. <laughs> yes, they are stinky. So they are pollinated by flies. Sometimes I would even see um, eggs, fly eggs or maggots moving there inside. Fortunately, this one doesn't have one yet. The flies haven't discovered it yet. But yes, most of them are known for their distinctly smelly flowers. These I consider as my diva succulents. <laughs> yes, I don't really know what they like. They don't like our extreme summer heat. They don't like our winter either. They thrive better when the temperatures are between, um, I would say, 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, like what we are having right now. That's why they look so green right now and look so healthy. But in winter, they would turn purple like this one right here if they get too stressed with heat or too much cold temperature they turn purple and they shrivel up so i try to protect them in the summer they're right here as you can see it's in a rack that doesn't get direct sunlight only bright shade and during winter i move these in my garage where uh, they have a little bit more controlled temperature there at least they are protected from freezing temperature so these are my asclepiads these are my lithops this is a new purchase so i don't exactly know what their name is and this one is the only lithop that survived for me last summer i always kill lithops <laughs> we have a love-hate relationship so i love taking care of them but they don't love me back or at least they don't like the way i take care of them and i don't always make it during the summer but I just keep trying because they have very beautiful flowers. So this is the one that survived during the summer. What I did differently this time is I kept this with my Hawortias in shade. So they're a little bit tall and etiolated, but at least they are alive. And this one is a more recent purchase. This is a Gasteria. I don't exactly know what type, but I've had this for several years now. I find Gasteria also to be very easy to take care of as long as you keep them protected from too much sun exposure. You can even keep this indoors. This used to be more lush and it used to be in a big pot. But I divided it and gave away some of them and I just kept the mother plant. This is the mother plant and then I kept a few of its babies here. So this one is also very hardy when it comes to heat as long as you protect it from direct sunlight. I only have this one because I don't want to take care of too much uh, shade-loving desert plants because shade is a prime real estate in my backyard. <laughs> so I can't have too many desert plants that likes shade. But um, I managed to keep this one and because of sentimental value, I guess, because I've had this for several years now. So I bought this along with um, one of the very first cactus that I have. So this is a little bit of an age to it. So I kept this one, but I got rid of my other gasterias. This is a gaster aloe flow. It is a cross between a gasteria and an aloe. So it looks like an aloe, but um, it requires more shade and more protection from extreme temperatures. This was given to me by Daz of Cacti Mania. It has grown so much since then. It actually produced a lot of pops and I took off some of the pops and gave them to friends and I kept the mother plant and one pop here in the back. So this is Gastier Aloe Flow. 
These ones are all native to South Africa, so they are very drought tolerant. This is a Trichodema densum. However, it suffered severe sunburns during the summer. I forgot to protect it, but it is recovering. It's starting to grow back. This produces uh, lavender or purple flowers. This one is a Focaria that produces little yellow like pom-pom like flowers. This is a Titanopsis calcareum. Pretty new. I haven't seen a flower on this one yet. And uh, this one is an Alloynopsis. There is the name. If I can get it to focus. There you go. This one is an Alloynopsis and it also produces yellow flowers usually uh, late winter or early spring. This is new. This was given to me by Catherine of Purple and Thorns. This is an Avonia. That is the full name of this plant. So I don't know yet how to take care of this. It has yet to experience its first winter and first summer here. But I like how it looks. It looks like it is covered with paper. And I know this one also flowers. These are my curly leafed plants. These are albucas. Okay, so this one is an albuca spiralis. I like how the leaves of this curl. So this is summer dormant. So it grows from bulbs. All of these, they grow from bulbs. During the summer, there's nothing. You will see nothing, just soil. And then the bulbs are there dormant. But come fall and winter time, at least for me, they start growing these leaves. And as they grow, they form curls on top. I am not exactly sure what kind of albuca these two pots are. They were gifted to me and there's no name. I haven't seen the flower on this one yet, so I'm not sure exactly what type of albuca this is. But this one, Albuca spiralis, this produces yellow flower. So it flowered for me last year. It was a tubular type of flower and it has a delicate like vanilla or buttery scent to it. In my front porch, I have this Portulacaria afra. So this one is the green type and then i also have the variegated one here this doesn't grow very big for me because i leave it outside all year round it doesn't like winter so during winter this would all die back drastically and then in spring and summer it would just recover and grow back its leaves another famous group of plants among arid collectors are euphorbias so this is my little euphorbia collection euphorbia are oftentimes mistaken as cactus as well because they also have thorns which is similar to the spines of cactus but these don't have aerials so that is what makes them distinct cacti have aerials while euphorbias do not euphorbias i don't have a lot of them i try to keep my collection small i limit it to those that don't grow very big like uh, these euphorbias that i have in here because some euphorbias sorry ice cream truck passing <laughs> i hope you can hear me but anyway um, as I was saying, I try to keep my euphorbia collection into the small compact types. Some euphorbias can grow several feet up high, like trees. So I don't have space in my backyard for them. So I keep my collection to those that are more compact. Although this I know will grow very tall eventually, but this was just given to me. This is an uh, euphorbia anoplia. And uh, this is one type of euphorbia that is very challenging for me. This is a Euphorbia Poissonii, the variegated one. This one is very temperamental. <laughs> if you change the condition under which it is in, it will drop its leaves. Too cold, it will drop its leaves. Too hot, it doesn't like it too, the leaves will burn. So this is very temperamental, but if you can grow this in your condition, I think this likes more humidity. This is very, very beautiful. And then um, I have a few like, this is uh, Euphorbia Polygona Snowflake. This is from um, Clyde Morris. He has a YouTube channel too, Morris Park in the Ozarks. A lot of my little Euphorbias are from him. This is also from his very old plant. This is a pop from his very old Euphorbia Seriformis. I have a Euphorbia Horita from him too. And this is another euphorbia this one was given to me by brian see brian it grew another one on top 
very pretty and this one is from Daz of Cacti Marinia very unique look it has a pinkish color on its stem see that very very beautiful two more little euphorbias here this is euphorbia deadly spina and then this is the dark green one is euphorbia handiensis this is a favorite um, a euphorbia obesa i was able to cross pollinate the euphorbia obesa with this euphorbia anoplia and i made a video on when i made that and i harvested the seeds and just a quick update this is now their baby <laughs> this is several months old so i still don't know if it looks more like the daddy or the mommy here the obesa is the mommy so only time will tell but this is now their offspring euphorbias are very hardy when it comes to heat you can even uh, grow them in your backyard as long as you don't have too much um, intense heat in your in your climate you give them a little bit of protection from the sun they are very hardy when it comes to hot temperatures but these are frost tender so if you get freezing temperatures in your area you need to protect this move them in a warmer place or better yet grow them indoors under grow lights during the winter time i have three pots here of euphorbia milii this is the one with the big leaves and bigger flowers as well medium-sized leaves and this is the one with tiny leaves so i've had this before but i killed it one winter time when i forgot to cover it with a freeze protection blanket so it froze during the winter and i lost them so i am restarting my euphorbia milii collection these are cuttings from my mother-in-law as a finale to my succulent collection that are not cactus is my haworthia collection so recently, Haworthia have been split into subgenus or different genus, I think. So the the soft ones, the soft fleshy ones are known as the Haworthia, the traditional Haworthia. And then I think the ones that are more rigid, like this one and this one, these are now known as Haworthiopsis. And then there's also the Tulista. I don't have that one anyway i just refer to this as all haworthias <laughs> so i don't keep a lot of them because they also require extra care during summer and winter but i do keep some that i think are unique looking like if they are variegated like this one this is a haworthia mutica variegated so i keep that and then i keep a little bit of everything i have some rosettes some that grow tall like this one and then i have some with stripes white stripes on them another variegated one and this one is haworthia nova enon so pretty and this i like this one this is a haworthia or now known as a haworthiopsis uh, lemifolia striata or the white spider okay and then a few more in here i don't really know the names of many of these <laughs> ones but um i try to keep a few of them because i find them interesting and the variety of which they come also are very very pretty they are easy care plants as long as you give them protection from sun but otherwise uh, in my weather fall and winter is the best time that they grow for me the flowers of these all look similar they are small and white so you don't really grow these for the flowers but more of the ornamental look of it because they look very very attractive so you can use them like as a centerpiece decorations for your table you can even grow them indoors as long as you provide them ample sun so they maintain their shape or their form this is my haworthia collection and this concludes my succulents that are not cactus video if you enjoyed it please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like cactus and other desert plants like the plants that i presented here 
subscribe if you like these type of plants and i will talk to you again next time bye everyone and cheers